Tonight, the aftermath of that huge tornado in Weld County. We didn't have any time at all. It hit us like that. A storm that came in so fast, people barely had time to react. And the closer it came, the scarier it got. Damage to homes and businesses, plus reports of farm animals dead and injured. And for many people, a close call they will never forget. We saw the damage, we saw the debris field. The tornado warning was issued just after 5 o'clock this evening, and a few minutes later, that big twister was on the ground. So far, there are no reports of deaths or injuries, but there's a lot of damage. Copter 4 giving us our first look at that damage tonight. This is a farm in the Platteville area near Highway 85. At least one building is toppled and debris strewn all about that property. And just south of that location, a house that appears to be a total loss. Next to it, we see a car flipped upside down. The twister stayed on the ground for 20 to 30 minutes. And as you can see, it was truly massive. People as far away as DIA and even Denver were able to spot it. Our team coverage begins yeah. with the storm itself and the damage. Meteorologist Lauren Whitney will explain the path of that storm. Tori Mason and Alan Janay are in Weld County. We begin with Alan. Well, Jim, some of the damage from this storm is understandable, not so much. Right near this house northeast of Firestone is this to my right. This is a cargo container. It wasn't here earlier in the day. They don't know where it came from. And the tree down there looked like it got the worst of it when this container somehow landed here. Now, the National Weather Service tomorrow will do a survey to determine the track of this hurricane, as well as judge its EF value on the scale. But there is little doubt this was a tornado with an angry agenda. Oh my it came roaring out of a Monday afternoon and at the Holder's farm, Steve saw it coming. I ran because I had just fed out the animals and I got everybody into the tub. We didn't have any time at all. It hit us like that. His wife, Carol, heard him yelling. We jumped in the bathtub and I got the dog. I pulled the dog up over and got my granddaughter and just kind of covered her and said, we need to pray, Lexi. Then things got worse. Freight train sound? Oh, yeah. And things slamming into things, yep. Down the road, their neighbors watched the tornado approach. Their security camera captured a transformer blowing as it hit the dairy farm next door. It sat down, picked back up, and sat back down, and then got enormous. The farm has 850 dairy cows. Two were killed as the storm tore at metal buildings. The holders came out from their home and watched. That was a three-bay loafing shed there. Now over here. Steve had a good look around. I had a whole coop, coop of uh, laying chicks in there that we're raising for this year. That coop's yeah, gone. Their horse, Leah, got cut from flying metal, and they got to work caring for her. Yeah, she won five races. But this tornado, thankfully, did not kill people. We're happy we're all OK. We're all OK. It's, this is stuff. God is good, because this could have been much worse. Yeah, it certainly could have been. You can see more of the damage here outside this home of things that just landed here or tree branches that are broken. Now, a lot of people reported this tornado today, so many that at one point it was thought it might have been multiple tornadoes, but there are just so many angles on it. And there were warnings about the tornado that came out, but at the holders, they didn't get it until after the tornado went by. In Weld County, I'm Alan Janay, covering Colorado First. Right now, another remarkable aerial view of that tornado. This from passenger Mikkel Carlson, who was on a flight into DIA, a clear shot from many, many miles away. Tori Mason, also in Weld County tonight. Tori, what are you finding? Well, Jim, crews were out here until about 15 minutes ago repairing some of the down lines out front, but the worst of the damage is out here in the back where we are. You can see that shed has just fallen over this vehicle right here, and the floor of that shed is actually laying on the ground next to me. I would walk over and show you, but as you can see, not much room to move. Everything from kids' bikes to window panes just scattered out here throughout the farm. But down the road, the damage is even worse. I heard this boom, lightning hit close. Look down there, I thought the feedlot was on fire. The last tornado Gerald Rush saw move past his Platteville home was in high school. And then pretty soon all of a sudden the white stuff's floating in the air. I knew that ain't a fire, that's the tornado coming here. He immediately rushed to protect his mother. And my son said, let's head for the front room. So we were headed for the front room, fell on the floor. So I got to the middle of the house, we laid down on the floor, and I said, hope for the best. Everyone at this home along Country Road 21 is safe. 
including the cows and the cats. Their home is okay, but other structures on this property are scattered throughout. We lost three buildings right there. The one that's sitting on top of my brother's car was about 200 yards over. About a half mile away. It was getting bigger and bigger. The tornado and tore the north side off the Smith's home. We had a couple boats. They're out in the field. Um, some trailers. They're out in the field. Um, ATVs, everything just gone. Including her husband's car that he's had since his teens. I'm still in shock. I just couldn't believe it. And then when I saw my car. That, that was devastating. Despite their losses, both families are glad they didn't lose more. Nothing you can do. It's Mother Nature. Mother Nature, you know, I actually came here from Kansas, so I've done a couple of these. And what I always find interesting about tornadoes is that, you know, if you were to go a couple miles in either direction, you wouldn't know anything passed through here today just by looking at some of the other homes. But they're lucky to be okay. And the only vehicles I saw pass by County Road 21 earlier were utility trucks and car loads of people asking if they could help. We're live in Platteville, Tori Mason covering Colorado first. Oh, thank you, Tori. Meteorologist Lauren Whitney was helping keep people safe with her reporting on the storm as it was happening today. Joining us right now, and Lauren, this storm developed quickly, but it did not leave quickly. It did not leave quickly. Here's actually some video from Weld County. This is from Cindy Mabry Hughes, and you can see that uh, landspout tornado. A lot of questions about what the difference is between a landspout tornado and just a regular tornado. These tornadoes are typically a lot weaker uh, than our typical uh, big booming thunderstorms thunderstorms that we can get that turn into those big uh, tornadoes that you see in the movies and that we see down in the south and in Oklahoma and Kansas. So these land spout tornadoes typically start on the ground and then they meet up with some uh, air as that rising air to the uh, top of the thunderstorms. So they combine and you get that land spout tornado. A regular tornado or the ones you typically think of, they start uh, up at the top and then go down to the ground. So these stor storms again are typically weaker. It doesn't mean if you are, are under one that it seems like a small storm, it can still create a quite a bit of damage. So land sport tornadoes, again, they're produced by non-supercell thunderstorms. So it can go from just being a regular thunderstorm to a land spot tornado very, very quickly, like we just saw, or like what we saw today. They're tall and narrow and usually short-lived. But this one today lasted for at least 30 to possibly 40 minutes, although I don't think it was on the ground for a full 40 minutes. And they're very, very photogenic. They look beautiful, that ropey structure. So we do get quite a bit of video from that usually. And for Colorado, Weld County is the number one uh, county for tornadoes. It's also the number one county in the United States for uh, tornadoes. And nearby Adams County is number two on that list and number three in the nation. We usually think about Oklahoma, parts of Alabama, but nope, it's right here in Colorado. Lauren, thanks. CBS 4's Dylan Thomas was one of the first reporters to make it into the damaged areas. From the air, this was our actual first view of the twister from Copter 4. That came in just after 5 o'clock. Right now, Dylan checks in with what he found shortly after the tornado passed through. We heard it. When we come out, came outside, a big cloud started coming down. What started as a warm Colorado day in the farm towns of southwestern Weld County. The clouds started coming down all fast and in this pure chaos. Quickly spiraled down to a forceful tornado ripping through farms near Platteville, toppling buildings, throwing debris, and downing power lines. I could see a funnel was forming from a big white cloud up high. And the more I looked at it, the wider it got and the more ominous it became. Scott Mining was working on tractors when he took out his phone and recorded this. I was feeling pretty brave for a while, but then pretty soon I thought, I better get my escape route planned. And the closer it came, the scarier it got. You could see a lot of debris flying, and then it just got darker and darker. Mining eventually sped away from the area as debris scattered throughout his field. Along County Road 21, northwest of Platteville. You could tell it was, it had a lot of power behind it. I could see sparks from when the power lines were crossing. So it, it got to be pretty scary. Fortunately, no injuries were reported in this area of the storm, and the tornado missed the community power plant by about a mile. For those who witnessed the tornado, I think it's amazing. Nature is wild. In Weld County, Dylan Thomas covering Colorado First. We have seen remarkable videos from this weather event and also remarkable the fact people were able to see that tornado from so many miles away. Jeff Todd sharing some of the best images with us tonight. Jeff, you can see the tornado from Denver. Jim, it was quite a spectacle. Views from all over the front range. We found pictures from Greeley, Broomfield, even right here in Denver. 
Scott said he actually had fun shooting this video near Platteville until the twister got too close for comfort. Debris is visible flying around the base. Sarah showed us this video just as the tornado was beginning to form. She was out near Mead. We saw it on the ground first. It, it looked like a dust devil. Kelsey and Cameron Granzi were driving from Platteville to Firestone when they saw it form and they took these photos. They were farther apart and then they finally moved closer together. They kind of circled around back behind us. Kevin shot this video from South Denver with the tornado seen just off of the downtown skyscrapers. Judy saw the twister out near DIA. Augustine got this picture with a lightning strike in Greeley. And Sawyer spotted this while golfing in Lafayette. Countless Coloradans with a Monday they will never forget, especially homeowners near Firestone and Platteville, as the tornado was frighteningly close. We saw the damage, we saw the debris field. There's trees down, a house on fire. Pretty sad. Weld County officials are actually asking for pictures. They're hoping anybody whose property was damaged will email in photos of that so that they can have a comprehensive damage assessment. They're also hoping that people will now sign up for the emergency notification system called Code Red. We can link you with both of those over on CBSDenver.com.